Hey gang, I'm Alan D. Welcome to the channel with a base review today. And this is this base has been it's been tough. And this is one of those bases that I, I see this base a couple times a day, minimum two, three times every day. And I have not restarted it. I I don't know. It's a riddle. I don't know how to solve it. Um, so one thing I've learned in this game, if there's a base I struggle with, I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna let people attack it and see how it does. Um, one good thing I can say is that this base has been performing as well for me as it is when I attack it because it's it's holding up incredibly well. And I'm, I'm going to get into I'll give you the numbers. So basically, here's the base, and I'm calling this base the knot, as in <laughs> Gordian knot, because I it's a riddle I have not been able to solve. It's it's tough. Okay, and he, so the setup is I have three accounts in Legend League. And I've been running this base for three days on all three accounts. Now, I'm breaking that down a little bit because my two main accounts, Warlord and Snake Eyes, those are max defense accounts. And then my third account, Bear Trap, uh, defenses are not, are not quite maxed out. So, it, that, it, so it's a little bit different. Um, it's not only really a fair comparison, but with, with the other two accounts, again, every defense is maxed. And um, so it's, it's as good as it gets, right? <laughs> um, so let's take a look at this base. Now you can see it's one of those those large boxy bases, and it really creates creates problems in particular for ground attacks, right? So you, so if, if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm I've been running the super archer um, attack with you know supported by golems and eight earthquake spells, and this is a base that is hard to quake. All right, so if we look at this with these compartments, the way they're spread out, you can quake here. And here, yeah, if you, those walls you can quake open. Actually, these outer walls too, if you if you wanted to. Those are walls that you could quake and get both walls, but your spell placement has to be perfect, right? So if, if you misplace one of those earthquake spells, you're going to leave one wall standing, and that, that's no good. So that's the first challenge, right? So if you're coming in with earthquake spells, like where do you place your spells? All right now, the other thing that you run into is you know choose your poison how do you want to go about this base do you want to make sure you get the town hall if because if you do then you're, you're facing the eagle down here oh lost my lost my uh telestrator all right so if you come in from the town hall side you're leaving the eagle till the end if you come in from the eagle side you're leaving the town hall for the end and you might not get it and i'll tell you i, I have had a, a few one stars um so the other the other option that and i've tried this myself is to come in from a side right to try to Try to just sweep your troops into the town hall, make sure you get that, and then hope, I don't know, just do the, do the best you can with the rest of it. Um, I've done that as well. Um, in fact, to the point that I, I ran, must have been 20 friendly challenges earlier, just me attacking myself, trying to figure out what works best against this base. And the, the best I was able to do was about an 88%, 88% uh, two star, about the best. And the, the way I found success against this base was just coming straight in with the log launcher. Um, sorry. So coming straight in with the log launcher. So a funnel here, funnel here, and I'm quaking here and trying to quake the, these walls here. And just get that log launcher in there, massing troops through the middle, and then hoping for the best. And the, the best result I had, the troops kind of swept around through nine o'clock. And this last compartment ended up basically untouched. And 88%, right? And that, you know, good for what's that, 26, 27 trophies. Um, that's as good as I've been able to do. So let's get into some replays. And, you know, as, we, as, we're, as we're setting that up, I will say I have a lot of replays for you. Um, I'm going to show you some of the common attack strategies. Um, also, and guys, this base, I, I did get tripled actually two times today, both on the same account, which hurts. But um, I did get tripled two times, and I'm going to show you how. Um, I will say, in my estimation, the best strategies for attacking this base appear to be air strategies, and it looks like Queen Charge Hybrid has has some better success. Um, because again, this base is just not set up, or it's set up to defend those those spammy ground attacks that I have grown to love. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I've got I've got a lot of replays for you, and I am going to I am going to show you both of the three star attacks against this base. But we are going to start with, let's start with the Odins, and Odins is coming in with a Super Wiz Goey attack. 
right? So again, this is, you know, Owens is going to do kind of what I've done a few times, just to make sure you get the two star. And I'm, I've kind of reached the point with this base where I see it and I'm just like, well, I guess I'm getting two stars <laughs> because I don't want to risk a one star. One star is just making me so frustrated. So Owens is coming in, quaking open. You can see the two compartments around nine o'clock. He's got the funnel going. All right, and this is just, you know, it's classic. You got Gollum, which is behind, and then the Super Wizards sending that log launcher in right at the Town Hall just to make sure the Town Hall goes down. Although, you, I tell you, that's a little bit risky. You're hoping the Town Hall goes down, but you know you don't really know what traps are in that Town Hall compartment, and you're not doing the Quake damage on that Town Hall. Um, nonetheless, the Town Hall does go down, and, you know, Yeti's, Yeti's in that log launcher. Um, the other troops have... Basically, they've come into the, the lower left quadrant of this base, and they're just they're getting fried right there, right? Um, most of the most of the troops are are gone at this point. Still got the, well, the Archer Queen just used her ability. Got the World Champion coming in, uh, the Freeze to support to try to get that Expo and the, the other Scatter Shot. But you can you can see right now this attack is basically over. Um, there's yeah, there's going to be some more destruction percentage, but not a lot and you're not going to bust through all those walls. The queen will be able to pick off a few things from behind the wall, um, but she's going to get roasted before she could ever, ever blast through a wall, which she loves to do. The queen loves to just shoot the walls. Um, and that's it. We're down to the Grand Warden at this point. Got one little wizard up here trying to pick up a, a few more percentage points, um, but we're basically done, right? And honestly, for this base, 63% two-star, that's not awful. It's better than one star, right? All right. Um, and okay, let's get into our next attack. And this is the Inferno Dragons that everyone loves. So this is King coming at us. All right, so King is going to kind of clear out around the town hall and basically rely, King is relying on the, um, the Archer Queen to kind of sui the town hall. That's, that looks that appears to be the, the strategy here. So a couple of these Infernal Dragons. Now one thing about the Infernal Dragons, so if you've, you've seen the strategy, if you know how to do it, if you've tried it, I've tried it, you got a lot of skeleton spells, right? You can see King has brought six skeleton spells. The whole purpose of those is to distract like the scatter shots and the single target Infernos. Well, this base is running three multi-target Infernos. So those, those, um, those skeleton spells are basically no good at this point. You got the queen coming in here, popping ability, and oh, didn't count the bombs that her queen did not get the town hall. So, you know, bold move here with the single infernal drag and one free spell. You know, that's that's just that's knowing your troops. I don't know that I would have done that. I probably would have spent sent two in there. All right, but basically, what, what King has done here is taking out the town hall to clear a path, use the blimp down um, on the eagle compartment. And so this is kind of a double envelopment strategy where troops are kind of coming from the outside and they pinch in the middle and they spawn on the other side. That's, that's the basic goal here. All right, so you got the rest of the, rest of the troops are all in there, just the, all the Infernal Dragons. You see, you see King dropping the skeleton spells. And again, those, those skelly spells are supposed to distract some of those, those more damaging defenses, right? The, the scatter shots and the, the Infernos. Um, but where he's dropping these, he's dropping them on multi-targets. He's dropping them next to Wizard Tower. Um, and they're just, they're really not having the intended effect. Right? I mean, they're, they're distracting for the Royal Champion down there. So, you know, all in all, I mean, this is not a bad result for this base. But again, this is another example of how, how well this base holds up. Because this, this Infernal Dragon strategy right now is, is super popular. A lot of people are running that. A lot of people claim to get a lot of three stars with it. I know my experience with Infernal Dragons was not that I got a lot of three stars. In fact, I didn't get very many three stars at all with it, which is why I don't do it. But then again, I'm not I'm not big on air attacks. It's, it's not really my thing. All right, so this this attack is done at this point, right? So 76% and good for 24 trophies. And hang on, defensively, 24 trophies is not too shabby. Right? You'll you'll take that pretty much any day of the week. All right, so let's jump over to Snake Eyes. So, so I showed you the Super Wiz Goey, I showed you the Infernal Dragon, and I want to show you a, a Queen Charge Hybrid, right? Because that's another strategy that, that does have, or it does appear to be, this is sort of anecdotal, right? Um, it does appear to have decent results against this base. 
and I'm sorry, I've lost my thread. There it is. FXBI. All right, so queen charge hybrid, and we're gonna we're queen charging into the town hall. So this, I will say this is you know FXBI. This is a skillful skillful attack. Um, you know, certainly no disrespect there, and in fact, all it's all respect, right? Um, a good value out of this queen charge, right? Queen charge into the town hall, and you know, using a couple minions and the loon there to to funnel baby dragon to make sure that the queen goes in because that queen she has a mind of her own, she will wander off. She does that to me all the time. Um, you got a super wall break in to, to actually break open the wall behind the town hall. And that's just knowing the space because you can't really see that corner. So that corner could be could have been left open, but it's not. Um, but the queen battling against that, against the air sweeper, got the expo locked on. Now you're starting to deal with the scatter shot. Um, meanwhile, the air, air sweeper pushing back on the healers. And there's a bunch of bunch of air traps in that in that town hall compartment, right? The seeking air mines and the, the red mines. Um, but the queen does a great job, right? Queen got the town hall, queen got the the clan castle down, and the queen's going to ultimately get those two scatter shots, which is really a fantastic, fantastic result. So now over here at three o'clock, you get the king, the siege barracks, busting open that wall with a wall breaker on the uh, the three o'clock compartment into the multi-target, um, just trying to create a funnel for the hybrid right through the middle, right, right directly between twelve and three. So hybrids coming in, um, and it's it's looking good. This is a decent attack, honestly. <laughs> But there's just too much, right? So I mean, this this base it's it's spread out, but the way the defenses are set up here, the, all your defensive structures, they they are mutually supportive. So you, you're never not under fire, right? And and there's really not a lot of like trash buildings, right? All those are all around the outside, around the perimeter, and even those are covered by fire. So there's there's not a lot of like easy percentage points to pick up here. And again, you can only bust open so many walls. So, you know, the hybrid, the advantage there is the walls don't matter. They'll go over and under the walls. Um, but your heroes that are supporting the hybrid or, you know, or that the hybrid is supporting, the hybrid is tanking for the heroes. Um, those heroes, you know, for the most part, they're not jumping over the walls, right? Especially the, the queen. And so the attack just kind of dies out. And that's, that's pretty much it. You know, so you got a few more points coming in, uh, the warden doing his thing. but. Not not much. We're basically over at this point. You know, a plucky little archer over there getting a couple more percentage. But uh twenty-five percent. All right, so our twenty-five trophies, uh seventy-nine percent two star. That's that's not bad, guys. All right. And now let's get into the three stars. And I'll tell you both of the three star attacks, two things about them. One, both were air attacks, and both were incredibly skillful and i really i want you to watch these attacks because they're I, i'm i was super impressed by these all right so first up we've got kia and kia was coming in with a, just a drag loon uh, using the clone spell there which was which is interesting you don't see a lot of clone spell um, but look at this so the loon to distract loons to distract the air sweeper long enough to get the blimp into the town hall because otherwise the air sweeper would have pushed that blimp back and the blimp maybe may not may have dropped the troops behind the wall so that's the first thing that i noticed that's impressive right that's that's a that is a pro move there all right so uh, but other, uh, beyond that we, we're trying to you know we got the e-drag up there and the minions clearing out that corner and it's all about creating a channel, right? Uh, E-drag over here at 9 o'clock uh, with another dragon. And then that's, that whole point of that is just to steer everything into the base. Line of loons, line of drags. And here we go, right? Uh, you're going to see the clone spell drop right about by that scatter shot to, to increase the loons there in the core, which is a, a smart move, right, to get that get the scatter down. Then you got all the, you know, they got the Teslas popping up in the middle around, you know, around that multi-target Inferno. Um, so great moves here. And guys, this is one where the finish is phenomenal. And I'll tell you, I watched this attack live. I, you know, it's one of those things that I happened to click on onto the, the account. I was like, oh, I'm being attacked. Let me watch it. And I thought it was going to hold. I thought, all right, this is, you know, a solid two-star. But I, I was not expecting the three-star result. 
And you'll see why here as, as this attack starts to peter out a little bit. So we're basically done. We've got a, got a few archers left, but nowhere, nowhere obvious to place those archers. Um, you get the multi-target. I'm thinking, all right, so this multi-target, it, it, it looks like it's going to take out these dragons. And oh, oh, then the tornado trap pulls in there. Yeah, you still got the warden you're dealing with. The warden's pounded on the on the multi-target, and the warden's going to get that multi-target. And then the archer tower is going to get the dragon, but then you still got the warden. The warden's plucking away, and it's a race, right? Who's going to go down first? And watch for it, right, right here. Seeking air mine. Ah, just missed, right? Because if, if that warden strike had been just a hair later. That would have been a 99% two star, but such is life. All right. So anyway, that's an impressive attack. A little bit of luck on that one um, for the attacker, but hey, luck is luck counts in this game. All right. And then our last attack that I want to show you, the last replay here, is uh, Sedia, Sedia One, and this is uh, Dragon's Loons, and you got bats, right? bats to close out this base and this is one of the most expert bat runs i have i've seen in a while so watch for that at the end but basically you got sui heroes coming into the eagle compartment uh, super wall breakdown and then just creating a channel so that all the loons and dragons sweep up from from nine o'clock right and said Yuan's dropping the blimp uh, pretty early on um while the air defense is being distracted by all those dragons and loons um you know that's again pro move good warden good use of the warden ability right there in the core to protect the blimp and protect all those loons uh, blimp soaked up a bunch of seeking air mines right there at the end and actually dropped its troop short of the town hall but it didn't matter the yetis were still able to, to hammer on that town hall and get it down and so right now like this this is looking decent royal champion got some good 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 use out of that shield um but the main force here is, is petering out. And then look at these look at these bats coming in. Bats from three o'clock uh, freeze on the multi-target, another freeze on the multi-target. You're gonna drop a third free spell on the multi-target. I'm like, how many spells does this guy have? And then a great use of the freeze on the scatter shot, because that's one shot from that scatter would take out all of those bats, but as it was, they got it. And then watch this right here. Archers to distract the wizard tower just long enough that it redirects off of the bats and the bats get the wizard tower that was that was phenomenal right that's just a great use of those an archer to distract the wizard tower just long enough so the bats can get in there and hammer that wizard tower that was great um i'm super impressed you know i wanted to say this was another lucky three star but it really wasn't there's a big bat swarm there the dragon still got plenty of health left and the queen still got her ability um it, this was just a, a great attack and you know my, my hat's off to steady one all right gang so that's that's it um i've showed you a lot of replays it's been a little bit of a longer video i want to give you some some overall numbers right how did this base do and i'll tell you um so over three days the first two days were in the 5100 range um the third day day three was above 5200 so we're still kind of in the lower levels of Legend League, uh, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm trying. I'm trying to get about 5,400. I'm going to keep running this base. We'll see how see how it goes. All right. So for Warlord, over three days, you've got two three stars, 19 two stars, one one single star, uh, 22 attacks total or 22 defenses total, an average trophy loss of 23.5 over three days. So e even with those two three star attacks factored in, um, your average trophy loss is only 23. Point five, which is really really good right that's that's impressive all right with snake eyes you've got um no three stars against you got 18 two stars four one stars and because if you think about it like this base that's tough like i have the, i have one star to myself just because you you feel like you got to come from six o'clock to try to get all the way through and that's the only way you're going to get a three star and then you don't get the town all but 18 two stars four one stars so over 22 defenses total average trophy loss of 21.9 which is really really phenomenal and that's that's fantastic for legend league play um with with the way offense is is running these days it's hard to not get at least two sard and and to have like low trophy levels on those two stars is really is great all right and then with bear trap and guys again a note on bear trap let's just pop over there real quick 
So I'm going to show you just what I'm talking about. So Bear Trap is at a different level, right? Bear Trap is still upgrading a lot of defenses. Um, you've got a scatter shot still going to level two, and you got I think all of the expos are being worked on at the moment, so they're not maxed. You got you got a level one eagle over here. You got le level one inferno towers. Ah, sorry, I'm trying to click on that thing. Uh, level one inferno towers. <laughs> so this base is just is not maxed. The wizard towers are still one level off of max. Uh, the archer towers are are all upgraded, and the cannons are all upgraded. But some of those key defenses. I've in intentionally kept those low. So that's what I mean when I, I don't, I'm not considering Bear Trap in the overall numbers because it's just, it's not really a fair comparison. I mean, Bear Trap is one of those bases I get hammered. The only, the only way Bear Trap is, is able to stay in Legend League is a lot of people just don't attack, right? I'll have days where I, I don't, I only get attacked like three times or four times. Um, so people just miss their attacks and then I'm able to just kind of float in the 5,000, 5,100 range. Um, but then I have other days, where, like sometimes I'll creep up to like 5,200 or so, and, and then I get crushed, and I get I take like 250 uh, trophy losses in, in one day defending. Um, but anyway, uh, Bear Trap over three days uh, attacked 19 times against this base, an average trophy loss of 24 per attack or per defense. So that's that's really good. Uh, for Bear Trap, th those are really good numbers. I'm happy with that. I'm going I'm to keep running it and see how it does. So combining Warlord and Snake Eyes, so 44 attacks against those bases, um, two three stars, 37 two stars, five one stars, and average trophy loss of 22.7, and gang 22.7. I have not seen a base do better than that. So I'm gonna keep running it. I'm gonna keep pushing, trying to get to higher levels and see how it does. Um, so stick around, check back, look for that later on. All right, gang, that was a long video. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for just, thanks for uh, hearing me out. Um, I was excited about a couple of these replays. Really excited to show them to you. I'm, I'm glad you watched. So um, until next time, take care.